So I have a law enforcement agency in my film. Can I just use their logo and graphics? Nope, you cannot, except for certain entities. You get to be very mindful of which those entities are and that could change of what's available. My name is Sarah Kogan. I am a designer and visual producer for film and television. I champion filmmakers by helping them craft cinematic cohesion by aligning their film's design and visuals to their script. And I love helping them understand how to use those elements in relationship to budget so that people can choose what really matters for their film versus blanket budgeting because that always gives us basic stuff. So if you have a law enforcement agency in your film or any other sort of governmental agency, you get to find out first whether or not you can use that agency in your film. And if you can use the name, are you allowed to use the logo? And if you're not, then you get to create a, a fictional brand for that. So I've done many shows with different law enforcement agencies and we've had to actually create our own graphics and then ultimately our own patches, our own seals on the cars, right? The seals on the back of the wall, uh, the, you know, the, not the seals, the shields. <laughs> I've done many shows where I've had different either law enforcement agencies or government agencies such as postal workers and other things that we got to be really clear about whether or not we could use their name and use their artwork. So in one show, we were able to use the name of the police department. However, we were not allowed to use their shield. And that's what they call the patches that you see. Those are their, you know, their shields. There's the badges. And then sometimes people call those shields as well. But the, this shield or this symbol that you see, the logo, the graphic that you see on the side of cars, the side of buildings, right? The behind the characters when they walk into the main space, any sort of pamphleting and brochures, all those graphics get to be cleared and created then from scratch. So you end up having a larger cost than you would if you had an entity that you could use. So when you have your own law enforcement agencies, you get to make sure that's clear. And then there's also rules and parameters about making sure that it's not something that would then get confused. So when we're on set, we get to also make sure that we have coverage for all our actors wearing uniforms because uh, they cannot be allowed to look like police officers. It'd be considered impersonating an officer if they are not on set and not in front of the camera shooting. So during any time that your actors are down, you get to be very mindful because that can also be a ticket or a fine. And again, that's money out of the budget that we don't want to spend. The other thing to be aware of when looking at clearances with any sort of government agencies, specifically thinking police um, units, right, different precincts um, and fire department numbers, you also get to double check what you're allowed to use in terms of the numbers. On one job, I was told we could only use, because of New York, we could only use 99, that that Precinct 99, which is also why Brooklyn 99 exists. Precinct 99, Ladder 99, Engine 99 are the ones in New York that we're allowed to use because that's a fictitious, they've actually set that aside. Wherever you are in the country or in your own country, you wanna make sure that you're clear on what precinct numbers and or ladder and engine numbers for fire departments and the like that you're allowed to use. It's really important to make sure that you're not accidentally putting the wrong precinct numbers into your film uh, only to then find out you're in trouble. So let's not do that. That's not fun. And again, once we have the clearances, we're good to go and we can use it, right? They might tell you, you can use this one um, and that's okay. Or these other numbers and that's okay. It could also mean you get to make your own precinct pins because you might need to get a number that doesn't exist out in the world to purchase. So those are just things that could then end up creating new, more costs. Also, there's the, you know, the shields and metal, you know, the brass and metal shields that are on the end that Then there's the badges and the brass that is on the uniforms that also gets to be clear, right? So this number that you see on police officer uniforms relates to the precinct that they're a part of. So you gotta make sure that this number is something you can use. The number on the, on your helmets for the fire department, that goes to either the ladder or the engine that the fire station has. Uh, just a side note on ladder and engines. 
There are some fire trucks that do not have ladders. They are only called an engine, while as there are also ladders and ladders are separate. So that's why there are engine numbers, ladder numbers, they have different colors. These are also the things we get to learn about to make sure that we are in the know. Anyways, back to all the things we get to think about. So then the other thing is to be aware of what the brass is, right? So this shield that we have here, the, the badge, the metal badge that's here, that gets to typically gets to be different from the actual badge that would be in the in the community that you're shooting in right the, for the company that you, this badge typically depending on the precinct and depending on the jurisdiction gets to be different than the actual badges in the area again to differentiate that this is not a real police officer as well as or any other government in, you know government law enforcement emergency responder again based on the based on the jurisdiction that you're in and who you are looking to represent and so you get to then come up with something different that's different for this and that can either be going custom which can couple cost a couple hundred dollars um to like several hundred dollars per badge and you get to that and then typically the it's a little it can be a challenge to get them fully custom because again the the badge companies aren't allowed to just make full badges willy-nilly because it's a safety hazard for the community. And so you might have to then get them and make, you know, get them blank or, you know, figure out another way around that. I've used, I've gotten blank badges and um, I've gotten blank brass for my uniforms for things and just printed on printable metallic paper that you can get at like Staples, Office Depot, any sort of office supply store. And you literally can just print on this metallic paper and then cut it out and stick it on. And that worked great. So those are some things to think about when we're looking at doing any sort of law enforcement agencies as it comes to clearance and the ways that it can affect budget. Because again, if you have to make all custom graphics, you know, you get to spend the money to get the patches made. Um, that's going to cost money because every time you have any sort of embroidery for those shields, um, there's a digitizing fee for the embroiderer to digitize and create the embroidery stitching pattern for that image. And then there's the actual cost of creating the patches. If you do any other variation of that graphic, such as, you know, RPD and you, like, let's say it's a, the, the police department is my hometown, Reading. So right, the Reading Police Department RPD. And we have our custom, you know, our custom shield, our custom patch. And now we wanna make a baseball cap that says, with the shield on it and it says RPD. Well, now we have to get another digitizing fee to make that happen. And we're gonna send all new artwork. We wanna print it on the shirt, same thing. If we're gonna print it, custom printed shirts or get silk screens done, those are all gonna have a startup cost and then a cost per garment. So when you're thinking about what you're going to want for your film and what those items are going to be, start thinking about how the different ways that you want to use this image so that you can be really clear. Um, when you start putting in any sort of law enforcement or, I mean, and this goes for any other brand besides any sort of emergency responders and government agencies. As we think about what we want to use this branding for, we can start thinking about the iterations that are going to be required to happen. Do we need to have a big vinyl graphic printed to stick up on a wall? Do we need to have brochures, business cards made? You know, all these things that will then cost extra money that that gets, you know, just keeps adding. So we want to be really clear about how we want to utilize stuff for that reason when making branding and when utilizing government agencies in our film. Just know what you need to know to make sure that you are in alignment and legally sound because the last thing you want is to get a lawsuit for the improper use of someone's images or logos or graphics, especially when it comes to law enforcement and government agencies. So those are some thoughts on how do you think about the budgets and what it means for your film when you are doing any sort of government agencies, emergency responders, and law enforcement. Again, there are some things that are license free and you'll be able to utilize. Go find those, make sure that you have that they are actually license free and that they're license free specifically for the use in film and television and commercials. Because if they're not, it's a different license oftentimes. And so then you could still be in 
um, intellectual property infringement. So we don't want that. If you found this helpful and you want more about budgeting and what things are gonna cost and what the numbers are, check out my book, The Filmmaker's Guide to Budgeting for Costumes, Hair, Makeup, and Production Design. We go into all the things. We talk about different scenarios that I've experienced and how they could apply to your film. We talk about all the different factors that go into design and design budgets and really how to think about it and what matters so that you know what you can achieve on your film and what you are asking for. It helps to make sure that we run smooth sets. Thanks for hanging out with me today. The link for the book is right there below in the show notes. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to my channel. I am doing more and more videos like this every day. Keep telling your stories and filming your dreams. See you next time.